have a great speaker for you today on the theme of death, uh, depth, not death, that would be a different, that'd be a different talk. We'll do that another month. She is uh, an artist who draws and sculpts. She is also a coach who helps artists at all levels get their creative process started and gives them the inspiration to keep going. We are very excited to welcome her to the Creative Morning stage today. Cool, thanks so much for having me. Um, so, welcome, thanks for being here. I'm Christine Garvey. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about depth, I think, right? That's what we're all here for. Um, so like you said, I, I'm an artist and I'm a coach based here in Austin. Um, my making practice is in drawing and installation. I've been doing that for a long time and I've been teaching for a long time. And outside of my uh, making practice, I run an online school for artists called A Mighty Practice, where I coach artists through the various challenges in their creative practices and creative lives, which we all know there are many challenges along the way. Um, and I have a little ginger baby. There he is in the bottom. I just had a show at, here in Austin at the Contemporary Museum in January, which was, um, that's what the work is from. And before I started doing my work as a coach, I was a teacher for a long time and I went to art school. I went to so much art school, way too much art school, seven years of art school <laughs> and for any human. And you know, then I taught in higher education and various um, educational centers. And there was so much that I loved about art school. I loved the community of art school. I loved having the time and space to work on my art. I loved learning about different techniques. Like there was lots of good stuff about art school. But I had a lot of problems with art school. I had so much art school beef. Raise your hand if you had art school beef, if you went to art school. Um, <laughs> And I had three, three kind of really big problems um, with art school. The first one is that I think there was way too much emphasis on criticism. Uh, too much emphasis on how to tear things down, how to find holes in things, how to, to whittle away at your ideas versus build them up. And I really saw the long-term consequences of that type of emphasis, you know, for creative people, right, where you, that inner critic gets stronger and stronger along the way, and it's harder and harder to trust your ideas. So too much emphasis on criticism. Um, the other thing that I had a problem with is that I felt like there was a really narrow view of what it means to be an artist and what the life of an artist can look like and what success as an artist can look like. I think that art school presented really a very narrow path and it was a, is a hard thing to follow and keep up with in terms of you know the reality of working and, and living as an artist today. So I had beef with that. Um, and then I also had beef with, there wasn't really the teaching of process. Process in the sense of like, how do you go from having an idea in your head to nurturing that idea and getting it out in the world? I think a lot of the experiences of art school was like, maybe you would get an awesome teacher and it, something really clicked and you know, you, you got on your way and it was awesome for you. Or maybe you had a really shitty teacher and it was really sucky and art school sucked for you. And so that was what, you know, my experience and talking to so many artists, their experiences. And I wanted to find a way to talk about process because in order to go deep, in order to feel real connection to your creativity, to your ideas, to your work, you need a process for developing those things and nurturing those things in a sustainable way. And so that was really the foundation of my school and the way that I coach as an artist. Because this is what we all want. We all think that, okay, if we're gonna write our book, or we're gonna finish our album, or we're gonna make that series of paintings, there's gonna be this gorgeous moment where we just feel really calm and ever, there's no obligations, and the, just the ideas like just flow out of us, and we have a cup of coffee and everything feels great. But we know that that's not true because we have those work emails that we forgot about, right? And then we realize that we didn't file our tax paperwork 
appropriately. And then, you know, all of a sudden our kid starts screaming and we realize that there's no food in the fridge to feed him. And so all we have for dinner is a can of boiled peanuts that our mother-in-law sent us in the mail. What's the deal with boiled peanuts? Is that like a thing? I don't know. So I have like tons of them now. So if you want some, you can come by. So this is reality. This is a Wednesday. And if we want to really go deep with our work and connect with our ideas, we need a process because everything is vying for your attention these days. It is very hard to be focused and give time to the things that you actually care about. And when we have a process, it helps us do that. So what is this magical process that I am talking about? This is the, this is the process that I use in my own creative work and what I kind of instill in the people that I work with. So when I say creative process, maybe you have a really fancy idea of like, um, you know, of what that could mean and it sounds kind of magical. It's very simple and it's very practical. A creative process is just the steps that you take to transform an idea from something that's just in your head to something that lives out in the world and that you share with other people. So um, you might be thinking like, why is having that imp important? I work in like a really project-based way. I work in a collaborative way. I work in a way like everything feels different every time I sit down to work. I don't know if that's for me, why is having a process really valuable, especially if we're talking about depth? Well, I wanna say a few different things about that. Uh, one, it's helpful because it prevents overwhelm. Raise your hand if you are overwhelmed on a daily basis in this world. Don't lie, I see you liars out there. Raise your hand. Okay, we are all overwhelmed. Everything is vying for our attention. We have many, many different demands. And when we have a process, we can say, okay, right now I am focusing on this. This deserves my attention in order to develop these ideas. Okay, I'm gonna set these other things aside and I'm gonna allow myself to like nourish this part of my creative life. So it helps you get focused, right? And know where to give your attention. It also helps you take action. Because if you can say, okay, right now I'm in the experimentation phase of my process. I'm taking actions around experimentation or I'm in the research phase of my creative process. I'm taking actions around research, right? So you know where to take action. And then the last one, which I'm gonna dig deeper in today, is that it helps you know where you're getting stuck because every single person in this room gravitates to one stage of the creative process and that's where you get stuck because that's where you spend most of your time. So if you can recognize where are you spending too much time, are you doing too much experimentation, are you doing too much research, are you doing too much generating, I'll talk about it. How do you move through that to get to the next stage, to get the ideas out and let them go? Because you also have to let your work go and have a life in the world outside of you. Okay, you with me? Yes. All right, so that's the value of a process. So what is this magical process that this lady is talking about? Um, it exists in five stages and it's gonna feel familiar to you because I bet you it's something that's already embodied in how you work. Five stages of the process that I teach are clear, Play, fuel, generate, and reflect. And the best way to explain this is through the metaphor of shaping a block of clay. So imagine I give you a block of clay and I say, hey, put your ideas into this clay and you have never seen clay before. What would you do? Well, first you would clear your workspace. You might put on you know, clothes to work with those clay, that clay. Uh, you might make time, because the first thing you're making in your creative work is time. You might be creating attention. Then you might put your hands in the clay and say, I've never worked with this material. What would it feel like if I squish it around, if I move it, right? What can this clay do? You might learn, you might experiment. That's the play stage. Then you would hit a wall. You would say, okay, I've done everything I can with what I know about this clay in my hands. I need more information. I might need an example. I might need a class. I might need, you know, an image to help you get to the next stage. Then with that embodied knowledge, which is the play, and then the external knowledge, which, which is the fuel, you would generate. You would set constraints and you would make a bunch of work. 
and then you would reflect on the work that you've made. Make sense? Okay, so at each of these stages, we are asking a different set of questions. So I'm gonna offer these questions to you guys today, and I want you to think in whatever you are creating, where are you in this process? What questions are you asking yourself right now that's helping you move that work forward, helping you go deeper into what you do? So what's that clear stage? The clear stage is about identifying your blocks and clearing a pathway for new ideas. It's about preparing yourself and your workspace for flow. I hate that word flow, but I'm gonna use it because you know what I mean. Um, okay, so what are you doing at the stage you're removing? You're cleaning up your workspace, you're clearing your obligations, you're cleaning, you're setting things aside, you're opening yourself up to new ideas. That's what the clear stage is. You're getting ready, making time. So what you might reflect on at this stage is what's not working about my current workspace. You look around, where are you feeling stuck? What has to change in the environment that you're working in? Or on the emotional side, what am I telling myself that's preventing me from getting started? I bet you a lot of it has to do with obligation. Other things that you feel like you have to do before you can write your book, work on your album, you know, start your band, anything like that. So that's what you would think about at the clear stage. Then we move to play. Play is about testing and experimenting. It's about developing confidence in your voice and exploring possibilities. I love giving this example of when I was teaching at the University of Texas and you, I had all of these um, students come in, you know, from, they're like the top 10 student, top 10% of Texas, they come into the program and they really want to do well. They have all made the best rodeo drawing in Texas. Do you know this competition? You have to, you draw a pony and there's like the best pony in Texas thing. <laughs> and it's a real thing. And they all come in, they're like, I did the best rodeo drawing. And they really want to do well. And the reality is that if you really want to do well, if you want to perform, you cannot learn. Right? You cannot be receptive to new ideas. So you have to be open to working differently and exploring. How did I get them to do that? I got them to collaborate because you can't control the results when you collaborate. <laughs> I got them to you know, work on the floor, put music on, anything to de-invest in the end result because when you want to play, you have to de-invest in the end result. And the amazing thing is, is that you actually do get incredible results, right? If you let yourself play. So it's a vital part of the creative process and we never make enough time for it. Uh, what would you ask yourself at this stage? So we're testing, we're experimenting, we're learning, we're exploring. This is what we would ask ourselves. How do I like to experiment in my work? What is my play strategy? Everybody plays in a really specific way. Your play strategy is the way you naturally explore new ideas. What is that for you? That's our play stage. Then we move to fuel, right? We've done that experimentation and now we're like, okay, I hit a wall. I need something else. I need something outside of myself to shape and move what I'm doing forward. That's our fuel stage. It's about seeking inspiration or useful models that can shape your ideas. It's about identifying resources, tools, and new perspectives. This is different for everybody. That might be a talk. It might be a class. It might be working with a coach. It might be trying new materials. It's that st stage of seeking, informing, modeling, and shaping. So this is what we would ask ourselves at the fuel stage. What information am I missing that could help move my work forward? Because you can't do it on your own. That play stage is about that trust and developing things, but that fuel stage is saying, if or, am I gonna move this thing forward, I need something else. And that's when I ask for help because you're just missing information. Maybe you're missing context. That's fuel. And then generate. Now, generate is a stage that everybody wants to sit down at and immediately start generating. Is that true? Yeah, that's the thing with depth, right? Is like we want to sit down and we want to immediately produce our amazing book. We want to immediately produce like everything that feels important to us. And the point is, is that you can't generate until you've done all of this stuff first. Okay, so generate is about making a bunch of stuff without prematurely evaluating the results. 
That means that you are making something and you're letting it go. You're making something and you're letting it go. And you're not overanalyzing what that work is because we want to delay that process of criticism till the end so that it's powerful. If we're doing it all the time, we're cutting ourselves short, not letting the ideas develop. So the generate stage is super important. You're creating, you're expanding, you're moving, you're producing, you're letting the ideas out and you're doing that in a repetitive way with constraints so that they can really sing. And what people struggle with at this stage is not having tight enough constraints. So if you are at the generate stage, you need to ask yourself, what limitations do I need to set in order to feel empowered to produce? Because it's about making things tighter, making a container that you're working in so that you feel empowered to make those ideas and let them out and keep doing it in a repetitive way so they can develop. That's generate. And then lastly, reflect. We all know this stage, right? Reflection, for me, is about reviewing what you've made with a sense of curiosity versus criticism. Now, when I say curiosity versus criticism, we're going to go back to that metaphor of the clay. If we think of that criticism energy, like really, is really about that whittling down energy. So you think about that piece of clay, and we're making that clay maybe smaller and smaller and smaller. Versus if, the, if we're really leading that reflection with a curiosity energy, we're more shaping that clay and maybe adding to that clay. And it's kind of like more of an amplifying way of reviewing things. You with me? Okay. So what do we do at this stage? We review. We question. We consider. We maybe recollect ourselves. Maybe things got really, really crazy in that generative process and we, we're recollecting and we're pulling it back together. And that's what we do at Reflect. We would ask ourselves, what's most exciting about my current work that I want to expand on? Because wherever you're at, there is always something really exciting about what you're working on. And it's a matter of finding that and growing that piece of the creative work versus the stuff you're less excited about. So trusting that. Now here's the takeaway that I, I want you guys to think about and take with you today, is that if you're feeling stuck, if you are unable to really connect with what you are making and you're really struggling to get started in your creative work, it's often because we spend too much time at our particular stage and we're over trusting that particular stage of the creative process. So let's look at this again uh, and let's do a little poll here. Okay, who gets stuck at clear? Who's my people? They love to organize, they love to get ready, they love to do that cleanup. Yeah, I see you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what about who gets stuff at experimentation? You love to test, you love to try a lot of different ideas. Yep, my dreamers love it. Who gets stuck at fuel? You love taking classes, you maybe take too many classes and that's okay. <laughs> You're on Instagram, we got, those are my seekers. Generate, those are my like doers, 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 always doing, oh yeah, I see, burnout, that's our problem. We're, we struggle with burnout as people who generate. And then we got my reflection people who like love to think about it, love to analyze, yep, cool. Okay, so you know where you get stuck. If you are spending too much time at that stage, you gotta move to the next stage. So my reflection people, maybe you gotta move to clear. My generate people, maybe you gotta take a pause and move to reflect. Okay, so it's just a strategy to think about where do you spend too much time and can you revisit that? Can you move to the next stage? Can you be softer with yourself? Because if you want to really connect and go deep in your work, it's not always what you think you need to do. It doesn't mean you have to do more. Sometimes you have to do less to actually get the results that you want. So food for thought, I'm going to leave that with you guys. And um, this is you, your, your sweet little pod. Life has ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> Let yourself move forward in the creative process versus staying stuck with the strategy that you're using over and over again. Okay, I will leave it there. And I'll, any questions that we have, we can, we can talk about it. But um, yeah, thanks. We got a couple of minutes, we can do uh, questions. So let's say that initially you get used to your process and it like ingrains itself in your muscle memory and then, and then it is interesting. And then eventually like there's that phase of like good thing rut transition, uh -huh. right? So thinking about, I guess the most latest iteration of your work, what have you used to get out of your rut and into the transition to the good thing? 
usually I, I try to recognize where I'm getting stuck. So if I, so I am a generator. <laughs> I feel, I'm sorry for every, all of us, right? And so my problem is that I often get stuck in the doing stage. So that, you know, and that's what leads to burnout is like I overdo it. So I push myself, which is very uncomfortable into the reflection stage. And that might involve resting. It might involve like, you know, reading. It might involve kind of an, an area of like re-energizing. So I think wherever you're getting stuck, you have to consider like, what is the repeating pattern that you're experiencing? What stage does it link up with the best? And where can you move yourself forward with like a different set of intentions and actions so that you can feel like you're listening to the voice that you need to listen to again? So if you're overdoing it, maybe it's a reflection thing. If you're over testing and spreading yourself too thin, maybe then maybe like you, it's like picking one direction and like letting yourself take a class and like read and research and do that stage of fueling so it's really depending on where you're at and understanding what you need in that stage yeah right behind him Jess you have a question yeah Jess, hi uh, thank you so much um, I feel very inspired uh, I'm wondering you keep mentioning moving forward mm -hmm. if you're in a row I'm wondering if you ever suggest going backward yes. or do you continue going forward and go around as a no. cycle? Oh my god, great question. So I think about it as like trains on a, a, a stops on a um, train line, right? So it's like you, it doesn't always mean you're going forward, right? It's like, it's more about if you can say, okay, I'm at the fuel stage and I'm spending so much time here. Do I need to go back and like let myself get my hands and materials and trust myself again and develop ideas that way? Or am I ready to go and set some constraints and start making the work that I need to make? So you can totally go forward and go back. It's just recognizing what you need at that time. Also, everyone is different. I'm offering this as like a framework. Your stages could be like in a totally different order. It's all just about an intention and recognizing what's happening, what's the pattern, and how do you serve it to get out of that rut? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm curious if you're Brittany, collaborating you know. with other people and they are on a different stage from you, how do you navigate that? You know, I get stuck in the fuel stage, but I collaborate with people who might <clears throat> get stuck in the clear stage. Like what, what, oh my God. what goes on there? <laughs> uh, you know, that's like a whole other talk, I think, but it's, I, I Generally with collaboration, it's all about like what strengths do each bring to the collaboration and maybe dividing and conquering. So if you recognize, where do you think that you're strongest in the collaboration? I think fuel, for sure. You're a fueler. Yeah, so I love it's ideas. Like, in getting those ideas yeah. in. So maybe if you guys think about working together, like where you can step in the process and say, I'm gonna bring this stuff to the table, these ideas, these references, whatever, and that, you know, maybe that helps take you guys to that stage of generate, especially if, because I know you're in a band. Yeah. Yeah, so like that, that's really like, that kind of conversation is like recognizing everybody's strengths, recognizing that not everybody is gonna be involved in every stage of the process. You might move in and out and finding a good conversation that way about how it can work for all of you. I love yeah. that. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. All right. I think we got time for one more. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. How do you encourage, like, if you have a student who is a perfectionist and can't get started and goes down that rabbit hole of, like, I can't do it? Yeah. What do you do to kind of break through that, like to sort of get them to be like, it's okay to just try things and have it not be good and just keep going. Totally. Lowering the bar. First thing you delete Instagram. Second, you throw your, your phone in the river. Um, then you just, everything is about lowering the stakes as much as possible. The first way to lower the stakes is lower the time stakes. Remember, cause that's clear. So like you're trying to get into clear. So you make a 20 minute container of time and you say, all you have to do is work on this project for 20 minutes and that's it. And then you let it go, right? And then you do it again and then you do it again and do it again. And then you build the trust and then you can start integrating other variables like Maybe I use a new material this time, right? So it's like a slow thing. You start with the 20 minutes and you just make it very, very low stakes. Delay the review. Yep. Very cool. Thank you, guys. It's so fun. Yeah.